day 559 of the Trump administration, and this was just one more in a string of extraordinary days in our country. Because this was what we woke up to from the President of the United States. Quote, Attorney General Jeff Sessions should stop this rigged witch hunt right now before it continues to stain our country even further. Perhaps just as extraordinary, nothing happened after that. It was a Wednesday in America, and tonight Robert Mueller and his team remain on the job. In fact, there's late news tonight from the Washington Post on these negotiations for a possible sit-down interview between Robert Mueller and President Trump. Carol Lenning of the Post reports on this latest offer from the special counsel writing that Mueller, quote, indicated this week that he's willing to reduce the number of questions his investigators would pose to Trump in an interview, renewing negotiations with Trump's lawyers about a presidential sit-down after extended standoff, according to two people briefed on the negotiations. In a letter sent Monday, Mueller's team suggested that investigators would reduce by nearly half the number of questions they would ask about potential obstruction of justice. The two people said it's unclear which topic or topics would be left out. Michael Schmidt and Maggie Haberman of the New York Times wasted no time in reporting tonight on the president's desire to sit down with Mueller. They write, quote, President Trump pushed his lawyers in recent days to try once again to reach an agreement with the special counsel's office about him sitting for an interview, flouting their advice that he should not answer investigators' questions. Three people briefed on the matter said on Wednesday, Mr. Trump has told advisors he's eager to meet with investigators to clear himself of wrongdoing, the people said. In effect, he believes he can convince the investigators for the special counsel, Robert Mueller, of his belief that their own inquiry is in fact a witch hunt. Late this afternoon, President Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, gave his own update on this effort to come to an agreement. He's always been interested in testifying. It's us, meaning the team of lawyers, including me, that have the most reservations about that. I'm not going to give you a lot of hope it's going to happen, but we're still negotiating. We haven't stopped negotiating with him. The most recent letter, they sent us a proposal. We responded to their proposal. They took about 10 days, and yesterday we got a letter back from them. And now we're in the process of responding to their proposal. And again, all of this comes as the president escalated his attack on the Russia investigation. Here's what he said in full in this particular tweet. This is a terrible situation, and Attorney General Jeff Sessions should stop this rigged witch hunt right now before it continues to stain our country any further. Bob Mueller is totally conflicted, and his 17 angry Democrats that are doing his dirty work are a disgrace to the United States. Of course, Sessions took himself out of all matters Russia-related. Tonight, a source close to Trump tells NBC News he is, quote, constantly bashing Sessions in private for that recusal. That hasn't changed. And he, quote, can't get Sessions out of his mind. Confronted by what his friend and boss and client said this morning about ending this investigation, Rudy Giuliani did the only thing a lawyer could. He put on his tap shoes and he tap danced around what Donald Trump said this morning. It's an, an opinion. And he used his, he used the medium that he uses for opinions, uh, tw Twitter. He's established a clear sort of practice now that he, he expresses his opinions on Twitter. He used the word should. He didn't use the word must. And there was no presidential directive that followed it. But he didn't direct him. He didn't direct him to do it. And he's not going to direct him to do it. This whole obstruction of justice thing is nonsense. If he wanted to obstruct it, he'd obstruct it. I mean, he could just end it. He is a person with a First Amendment right to defend himself, First Amendment right to express his opinion. If he believes he's innocent, and he is innocent, he should speak out. White House also moved quickly to frame Trump's words as nothing more than his own personal view. Uh, it's not an order. It's the president's opinion. The president is not obstructing. He's fighting back. The president is stating his opinion. He's stating it clearly. Uh, and he's certainly expressing the frustration that he has uh, with the level of corruption that we've seen from people like Jim Comey, Peter Strzok, Andrew McCabe. Uh, there's a reason that the president's angry. And frankly, most of America is angry as well. And there's no reason he shouldn't be able to voice that opinion. But remember what the White House once told us about how we should regard what this president says on Twitter. Are President Trump's tweets considered official White House statements? Well, the president is the president of the United States, so they're considered official statements by the president of the United States. At least one Republican was willing to speak candidly about the reaction among many lawmakers in the Capitol. 
Every morning we wake up, he tweets something, and then we're like, we're supposed Generally to respond speaking, to his tweet. Me. Mueller's going to finish his investigation. The truth is all going to come out, and that's the best thing that could happen for the president and for the country. And after that, from Senator Rubio, let us bring in our leadoff panel on a Wednesday night. Peter Baker, chief White House correspondent for The New York Times. Jill Colvin, White House reporter for the Associated Press. John Heilman, longtime political journalist, co-author of Game Change and Double Down. And Harry Littman, former U.S. attorney, former deputy assistant attorney general under President Clinton. Good evening and welcome to you all. Peter, I'd like to begin right. with you. And I'd like to read you what Sally Yates, formerly of the Justice Department, wrote on social media today. Today, our president called on his recused attorney general to shut down the investigation of his own campaign. As shocking as that is, what's even more dangerous is that we've gotten used to it. The rule of law won't evaporate overnight, but it can slip away if we let it. Uh, Peter, there we have the president's own words to judge him by this morning. Uh, this is on him. I guess this is one of those lessons we get to see if words have consequences. Well, that's right. Look, what is fascinating is how much this plays out in public and out loud. What we see from the president's tweets is him saying what would have been a scandal had, say, President Nixon been uh, found to have said it privately in a in a tape session in the Oval Office. In fact, the, the tape that really finally undid him during Watergate was hearing him order his aides to tell the CIA to tell the FBI to lay off the Watergate investigation. Here, you've got the president of the United States saying out loud, not in the privacy of the Oval Office, but on Twitter. Twitter for everybody to read. The Attorney General of the United States, who reports to him, who was appointed by him, should shut down the investigation directly. And it is, in fact, uh, both surprising and yet not surprising. It's the kind of thing he's done uh, now for a year and a half. And we have kind of, uh, as a society, gotten uh, accustomed to it to some extent. Uh, Harry, I don't walk around quoting U.S. code. Uh, for God's sakes, I haven't read U.S. code, but there are three words in U.S. code that stands out. Specifically on this argument, you started hearing late today that this could be as trivial and unserious as Twitter still seems to so many people as a medium. This could still be a kind of slow rolling obstruction in plain sight. And the three words in the obstruction portion of U.S. code are if you're trying to influence, intimidate or impede an officer of the court. How is this not that? How is this not that? I mean, it, it beats me. That's exactly right. And in some ways, the notion of whether it's precatory or a command almost doesn't matter, although it's a very, very uh, tenuous distinction. He not only, it's not only the president um, uh, saying this, but he's saying in the same sentence, right now, uh, it's a rigged witch hunt. It is staining our country. Surely anyone who heard those words in the Oval Office would think he better remedy the situation or he is going to lose his job. But if what the president is trying to do in a mild way or a dictatorial way is shut down the investigation, I'll give you three other words, which are obstruction of justice. It's, the, it's a real uh, possibility, and especially, Brian, given the whole run of different tweets, all of which are admissible. He's, he's really flirting with, uh, with enhancing the criminal case against himself. So, Harry, as a former Fed, you can say with some certainty that the Feds on Mueller's team are looking at the president's words this morning in real time saying, would you look at this? Yeah, not only to this, and, and they, didn't, they didn't just jump to it this morning. I mean, they've been looking at the tweets carefully all the way through, and it's not simply, this tweet is really reminiscent of tweets he said in the past, but the whole kind of pattern of tweets where he goes back and forth and seems to be dancing around the notion of, here's two other words from the statute, corrupt intent. We're going to put these all together and, and see if we can make a case for his wanting to close it down, basically, to protect himself, the White House, and his family. But no doubt, just like any other statement, it's sort of silly to say, well, it's on Twitter or it's on White House stationery. It's a statement from the President of the United States, and it's admissible, and of course, they are analyzing it. Okay, Jill Colvin, tell us what you and your colleagues are reporting about this President's state of mind and the atmospherics inside the West Wing. 
confidence of the president tell us that he is definitely not happy right now. Uh, the president was watching television, watching coverage of uh, the beginning of the trial of Paul Manafort this morning. We're told that that is what sparked the flurry of tweets this morning. And one confidant uh, told my colleagues Jonathan Lemire and Zeke Miller earlier today that the president is, quote, in a dark place. The president has been furious. Uh, it's been building over the last couple of weeks, ever since he returned from Helsinki. He was furious at the media the way that he felt that he was not given enough credit um, for how things went with Vladimir Putin. He felt like he was being misportrayed and that his summit uh, with Putin was misportrayed. He felt like he didn't get enough credit um, for meeting with Kim Jong-un in Singapore. And he has just been raging. Um, and you've got the president who feels it's not just the media that is now uh, coming and attacking him, but also the government that's coming and attacking him right now. Uh, you've got, in addition to uh, the Manafort trial that we're watching unfold on television. The president has also been deeply shaken um, by uh, the ongoing investigation into Michael Cohen, his longtime fixer, and the release of that audio tape that really just set him off. And, you know, you saw today, anyone can see that the president is not in a good place. Okay, John Heilman here in New York. What is it we're witnessing? Uh, well, you're witnessing a, a combination, I think, of the, the president acts out um, when he, we see, we see this over and over again in a variety of different ways. His this is an expression of his id, and he's, he's, he's angry and he's afraid, and, and, and he can see the walls closing in. I, I think he's somewhere close to panic right now, and, and that's part of what's going on. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me, or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.